Darius Robinson stood outside the flagship store of a high-end luxury brand, observing the building he had built from the ground up. He was a self-made black billionaire, known for his quiet leadership and relentless focus on inclusivity. Today, dressed casually in jeans, sneakers, and a hoodie, he looked like any other person walking through the busy streets of New York, but his purpose was far from ordinary. Rumors had reached him of poor treatment towards customers in his store, particularly towards people of color or those who didn't look the part of a typical wealthy shopper. Employees had reportedly made snap judgments based on appearance, ignoring potential customers who didn't fit their perceived image of wealth. Darius, outraged by these reports, decided to investigate the issue personally, without revealing his identity. He stepped inside the store, inhaling the familiar scent of leather and designer cologne. The space was meticulously designed to exude luxury, from the polished marble floors to the carefully curated displays of high-end goods. But Darius wasn't here to admire the ambiance. Today, he was here to test the integrity of his staff, starting with the manager. As Darius walked past the rows of expensive suits and watches, a young saleswoman approached him with a polite but distant smile. Good afternoon, sir, she said, glancing at his casual clothes. Can I help you with something? Darius smiled politely, but before he could respond, a man stepped forward from behind the counter. He was tall, white, and dressed impeccably in a fitted suit, exuding an air of superiority. Mason Turner, the man said, cutting off the saleswoman. I'll handle this. His tone was cold and there was a hint of disdain as his eyes scanned Darius's outfit. Without offering a greeting, Mason crossed his arms. We're closing soon. If you're looking for something specific, you'll want to make it quick. The dismissive tone didn't go unnoticed by Darius, but he remained calm. I'm looking for a coat, Darius said evenly. Something high-end. Mason raised an eyebrow, his expression skeptical. A high-end coat, he repeated, glancing once more at Darius's casual attire. Our best pieces are in the back, but they might not be in your price range. The condescension was thick, but Darius simply nodded. I'd like to see them anyway. Mason led Darius to the back of the store, walking briskly and without the usual courtesy expected from a manager of a luxury brand. As they passed through the aisles of meticulously arranged designer goods, Darius noticed the stark contrast between how he was being treated and how other customers, dressed in suits and designer dresses, were greeted with warmth and attention. Here's what we have, Mason said lazily, gesturing toward a rack of coats without offering any explanation about the pieces or their qualities. His disinterest was palpable. Darius ran his fingers over one of the coats, feeling the fine wool and impeccable stitching, items he had personally approved when building his brand's reputation for quality. Despite the manager's attitude, the craftsmanship was undeniably excellent. This one looks good, Darius said, pulling a black trench coat off the rack. Mason's lips curled into a smirk. Sure you don't want to check the price first? He asked, his tone dripping with condescension. Darius's grip on the coat tightened, but he maintained his composure. No need, he replied calmly. Ring it up. Mason blinked, clearly not expecting Darius to proceed with the purchase. For a brief moment, uncertainty flashed across his face, but it was quickly replaced by his usual sneer. All right, then, he muttered, turning toward the register. As they made their way back to the front of the store, Darius noticed the young saleswoman from earlier watching them, her expression one of quiet discomfort. Mason punched in the price at the register, still eyeing Darius with a mixture of disbelief and arrogance. The price was steep, and Mason was clearly waiting for Darius to change his mind or admit he couldn't afford it. But Darius simply handed over his credit card, maintaining eye contact with Mason as the payment processed without issue. Enjoy your coat, Mason said flatly handing the bag to Darius without the slightest trace of genuine courtesy. Darius slipped the coat over his shoulders and turned to leave. But before he stepped out the door, he paused, his hand resting on the handle. Without looking back, he said quietly, I'll be back tomorrow. Mason didn't respond, but the tension between them was undeniable. As Darius stepped into the cool evening air, the weight of the day's events pressed down on him. He had expected some level of poor service, given the reports he had heard, but the sheer arrogance and dismissiveness of Mason Turner had taken him by surprise. It wasn't just about the way he had been treated, 
It was about a deeper, more insidious problem that seemed to have taken root in his store. Walking through the bustling streets of New York, Darius reflected on his journey. He had built his brand on the principles of inclusivity, ensuring that luxury was accessible to anyone who appreciated quality, regardless of how they looked or dressed. But Mason's behavior represented everything that Darius stood against, elitism, prejudice, and exclusion. It reminded him too much of the struggles his father had faced, being treated as if he didn't belong in places of wealth and success. Darius knew he couldn't let this slide. This wasn't just about ego or proving a point. It was about ensuring that his brand lived up to the values he had fought so hard to instill. Tomorrow, Mason would face the consequences of his actions. And this time, Darius wouldn't be walking in as just another customer. The following morning, Darius sat in his sleek office on the top floor of his corporate headquarters. The New York skyline stretched out before him, the sun casting long shadows over the city. His assistant, Lisa, stood by the door, waiting for instructions. Call Mason Turner, Darius said, his voice calm but firm. Tell him I want to see him in my office first thing tomorrow morning. Lisa nodded, sensing the gravity of the situation. Should I let him know what the meeting is about, she asked. Darius shook his head, his eyes fixed on the view outside. No, let him think it's a routine performance review. I want him to walk in without knowing what's coming. Lisa understood immediately and left the room to make the call. As Darius leaned back in his chair, his thoughts drifted to what had happened the day before. He had seen firsthand how Mason treated customers who didn't fit his narrow view of what wealth looked like. But today, that same manager would realize who he had been dealing with. And Darius intended to make sure the lesson stuck. The next day, Mason Turner entered the corporate headquarters of Mitchell Enterprises, walking with the confidence of a man who believed he was in control. He was dressed in a sharp black suit, his tie perfectly knotted, and his shoes polished to a high shine. He assumed this meeting was just another routine discussion about store performance, sales figures, and strategies. As he approached the executive conference room, Mason straightened his tie, preparing for what he believed would be a standard corporate review. He had been managing the flagship store for years, and had always prided himself on maintaining the luxury image he believed was essential to its success. Little did he know, today's meeting was anything but routine. When Mason stepped inside the conference room, his confident stride faltered. At the head of the long glass table sat Darius, dressed in a tailored suit, his expression unreadable. Mason's face twisted with confusion, recognizing Darius as the man he had dismissed so arrogantly the day before. Mr. Mitchell, Mason began, his voice unsure. I didn't realize. But Darius cut him off with a simple gesture. Sit down. Mason hesitated for a moment, then slowly took a seat across from Darius, his mind racing to piece together what was happening. Darius didn't waste time with pleasantries. Let's talk about yesterday, he said calmly, his eyes locked on Mason's. The color drained from Mason's face as he realized what this meeting was really about. You had a customer walk into your store, dressed casually, looking for a coat, Darius began, his tone measured. You dismissed him. You implied he couldn't afford the items in your store based solely on his appearance. Mason's mind reeled as he remembered the interaction from the day before. Yes, I remember, he muttered, his voice shaky. But I didn't know. That man was me, Darius interrupted, his voice cutting through the air like a knife. Mason's mouth opened and closed, struggling to find words. You? He stammered. But I didn't. I mean, I didn't know. Darius leaned forward, his eyes cold. No, you didn't know, because you didn't care to ask. Mason's face flushed with embarrassment as he fidgeted in his seat. His usual arrogance was gone, replaced by a mixture of confusion and fear. I was just trying to protect the brand's image, Mason stammered. We have a certain clientele, and I thought I was making the right call by ensuring that our customers match that image. He was grasping at straws, but Darius remained unimpressed. You didn't make the right call, Darius said, his voice sharp. You made a judgment based on prejudice. You looked at me, dressed casually, and assumed I didn't belong in your store. You treated me as if I wasn't worthy of your time or respect. And that's not just a reflection of you. It's a reflection of the toxic culture you fostered in my store. 
Mason's hands trembled slightly as he realized the gravity of the situation. Mr. Mitchell, he pleaded, it was a mistake. One mistake. I've been loyal to this company for years. Please give me another chance. But Darius shook his head. This isn't about one mistake, Mason. This is about a pattern of behavior. And it's clear to me that you don't represent the values this company was built on. The tension in the room was thick as Mason sat in stunned silence, his mind reeling from Darius's words. He had never imagined that the man he had treated with such disdain the day before was actually the billionaire who owned the entire brand. Now he was facing the consequences of his actions, and there was no escaping them. Darius stood up, his presence towering over Mason. Effective immediately, you are no longer employed by this company, Darius said firmly. Your behavior is not only unacceptable, but it goes against everything I have worked to build. This brand was founded on the principles of inclusivity and respect, and I will not allow anyone, especially someone in a leadership position, to undermine that. Mason's face went pale as the reality of his situation set in. Please, Mr. Mitchell, he whispered, his arrogance shattered. I can change. Just give me one more chance. But Darius was resolute. I gave you every chance when I walked into that store yesterday, he said quietly, and you showed me exactly who you are. As Mason left the building, his shoulders slumped in defeat. Darius felt a wave of emotions wash over him. The confrontation had been necessary, but it hadn't been easy. He had seen this kind of prejudice too many times in his life, against himself, his father, and countless others who were judged based on their appearance rather than their character but today he had the power to make things right. Returning to his office, Darius sat down at his desk, feeling the weight of the day pressing on him. The battle with Mason was over, but the fight to rebuild the store's culture was just beginning. He needed to ensure that the toxic attitude that had festered under Mason's leadership was eradicated and that every employee understood the values of the brand. He picked up his phone and dialed his assistant, Lisa. Call Sarah Moore, he said referring to the young saleswoman he had noticed the day before. I want to meet with her this afternoon. Lisa confirmed the meeting, and Darius leaned back in his chair, his mind already racing ahead to the next steps. The work was far from over. Later that afternoon, Sarah Moore sat nervously in front of Darius in his office. She had worked under Mason for years and had always sensed that something was wrong with the way he ran the store, but she had never felt empowered to speak up. Now, with Mason gone and Darius sitting across from her, she wasn't sure what to expect. Thank you for coming, Sarah, Darius said, his tone calm but direct. I visited the store yesterday, as you probably know by now. Sarah nodded, her hands clasped tightly in her lap. Yes, sir, she replied, her voice steady but filled with uncertainty. Darius leaned forward slightly. I watched you during my visit. You were the only person in that store who treated me with respect and made me feel welcome. Sarah bit her lip, clearly uncomfortable with the praise. I was just doing my job, she said quietly, but Darius shook his head. You did more than that, he said firmly. Mason is no longer with the company, and the store needs new leadership. I'd like you to take over as interim manager. Sarah blinked, clearly taken aback. Me? she asked, her voice filled with disbelief. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Darius smiled reassuringly at Sarah. You're ready, he said confidently. I've seen how you handle customers, and I've seen how you approach your work. You understand what this brand stands for better than anyone else in that store. I need someone I can trust to rebuild it, and I believe that person is you. Sarah looked down at her hands, her mind racing with the weight of the responsibility being placed on her shoulders. She had always dreamed of moving up in the company, but she had never expected an opportunity like this. When she looked back up at Darius, she saw the sincerity in his eyes and something inside her shifted. Yes, she said quietly, then with more conviction. Yes, I can do it. Darius nodded, pleased with her response. Good, he said. We have a lot of work ahead of us, but I know you're the right person for the job. As Sarah stood to leave, Darius added one more thing. I also want you to lead a full retraining program for the staff, he said. Customer service, inclusivity, respect, everything. We're going to rebuild this store from the ground up. 
The following week, Sarah took on her new role as interim manager with determination. She knew there were challenges ahead, especially when it came to changing the toxic culture that had taken root under Mason's leadership. But she was ready to face those challenges head on with Darius's support backing her up. The retraining sessions began with a focus on customer service and inclusivity. Sarah led the sessions herself, guiding the staff through exercises designed to challenge their assumptions and biases. At first, there was resistance, especially from some of the more senior staff members who had grown comfortable under Mason's elitist approach. But Sarah remained firm in her commitment to changing the culture. During one session, Sarah presented a scenario to the group. Let's say a customer comes in dressed casually, looking at our high-end products, she said. How do you approach them? One of the younger employees hesitated before answering. Well, I'd greet them like anyone else, but maybe I wouldn't push too hard. I wouldn't want to make them uncomfortable. Sarah smiled slightly. That's a good start, but what if that person is interested in something high-end? How would you know unless you treat them with the same respect and attention as anyone else? Not everyone was convinced by the changes Sarah was implementing. Kevin, a senior salesperson who had been with the company for years, voiced his concerns during one of the retraining sessions. I don't see why we're doing this, Kevin said, crossing his arms as he addressed Sarah. This store has always catered to high-end clients. Why should we lower our standards to be more inclusive? Sarah met Kevin's gaze evenly, her voice calm but firm. We're not lowering our standards, Kevin. We're expanding them. Luxury isn't about exclusivity. It's about quality. And that's something everyone deserves. Kevin scoffed, clearly unimpressed. And you think treating everyone the same will help us sell more? I doubt it. Darius, who had been observing the session from the back of the room, stepped forward. Kevin, he said, his voice calm but authoritative. This company was never about exclusion. It was never about catering to some imaginary idea of who deserves luxury. It's about giving people the opportunity to experience it, no matter who they are. And if anyone in this room thinks that's not the right direction, then maybe this isn't the right place for you. Slowly but surely, the store began to transform. Under Sarah's leadership, the staff started to embrace the new culture of inclusivity and respect. At first, there was hesitation, especially from the older employees like Kevin, who had grown accustomed to Mason's elitist management style. But as the retraining sessions continued, even the most resistant staff members began to see the benefits of treating every customer with the same level of attention and respect. The change wasn't immediate, but it was noticeable. Customers who had once felt ignored or dismissed began to feel welcome and valued. Feedback from clients improved, and word began to spread that the store was no longer just a place for the wealthy elite. It was a place where anyone could experience luxury. Darius visited the store regularly to check on the progress watching from a distance as Sarah led the staff through their daily routines. He could see the shift in the atmosphere. There was a new energy in the store, something lighter and more welcoming, and it was all happening under Sarah's careful guidance. Despite the positive changes happening in the store, Sarah couldn't help but feel a sense of doubt creeping in. The weight of responsibility pressed down on her, and she often questioned whether she was truly capable of leading such a significant transformation. There were moments when she felt the resistance from the senior staff, particularly from Kevin, who still held on to some of the old ways, and she wondered if they would ever fully embrace the new direction. One afternoon, as she walked through the store, observing the interactions between staff and customers, she noticed Kevin chatting with another senior salesperson. His arms were crossed, and his expression was one of discontent. Sarah overheard snippets of their conversation, complaints about the changes, about how things had been better before? It stung, knowing that not everyone was on board with the vision she and Darius were trying to create. That evening, she sat in her office, feeling the weight of it all. Could she really make a lasting change in the store's culture? Would the staff truly buy into this new approach, or were they just going through the motions? Sarah took a deep breath and reminded herself of Darius's confidence in her. He believed she was the right person for the job, and that was enough to push her forward. As if sensing her doubt, Darius made an unannounced visit to the store the next day. He walked through the aisles, watching as customers were greeted warmly and treated with respect, regardless of their appearance. It was clear that Sarah's efforts were paying off. 
There was a noticeable shift in how the staff interacted with clients, and the atmosphere was becoming more welcoming by the day. After spending some time observing, Darius found Sarah in her office, reviewing some customer feedback reports. She looked up as he entered, a mixture of surprise and relief on her face. Mr. Mitchell, she said, standing up quickly. I didn't expect to see you today. Darius smiled warmly, motioning for her to sit back down. I just wanted to check in, he said. See how things are going. As they spoke, Sarah shared her concerns about the lingering resistance from some of the staff, particularly from Kevin. Darius listened carefully, his expression thoughtful. Change is hard, he said after a moment, especially for those who've grown comfortable with the old ways. But what you're doing here is important. Don't let the doubts get to you. You're making a real difference. Inspired by Darius's words, Sarah returned to work the next day with renewed determination. She knew that the transformation would take time, but she also knew that she was up for the challenge. The next step in her plan was to implement more focused training sessions, where staff members could discuss their concerns and work through their resistance to the new approach. During one of the sessions, Sarah presented a scenario to the group. Imagine a customer walks in wearing casual clothes, but they're looking at one of our most expensive items. How do you approach them? There was a pause as the staff considered the question. Kevin, who had been one of the most vocal critics of the new direction, finally spoke up. I guess you treat them the same as anyone else, right? His tone was uncertain, but it was a step in the right direction. Exactly, Sarah said, nodding. You don't know what a customer's situation is just by looking at them. Our job is to provide the same level of service to everyone, no matter how they're dressed or what we assume about them. Slowly, the message was starting to sink in. Even Kevin seemed to be coming around, though he still had some reservations. It was a small victory, but an important one. Over the next few weeks, the changes in the store became even more apparent. The staff, once resistant to the idea of treating all customers with the same respect and attention, began to fully embrace the new culture. Customers who had once felt ignored or unwelcome were now greeted with genuine smiles and assistance, regardless of their appearance or background. Darius continued to visit the store regularly, quietly observing the progress. He was pleased with what he saw. The atmosphere had shifted from one of elitism and exclusivity to one of warmth and inclusivity. The store was no longer just a place for the wealthy elite. It was a place where anyone could come and experience luxury without judgment. One afternoon, as Darius stood in the store, watching Sarah interact with a customer, he felt a deep sense of pride. This was exactly what he had envisioned when he built his brand. Luxury that was accessible to everyone, regardless of how they looked or dressed. And thanks to Sarah's leadership, that vision was becoming a reality. Kevin, who had been one of the most resistant staff members to the changes, slowly began to come around. It wasn't an overnight transformation, but over time, he started to see the value in treating all customers with respect. One day during a busy afternoon at the store, a casually dressed man walked in clearly interested in one of the high-end watches on display. In the past, Kevin might have hesitated, assuming the man wasn't serious about making a purchase. But this time, he approached the customer with the same enthusiasm and professionalism he would have shown to anyone else. Can I help you with something today? Kevin asked, his tone friendly. The man smiled and pointed to the watch he was interested in. I've been looking at this one for a while, he said. I think today's the day I buy it. As Kevin assisted the customer, he realized something important. By not making assumptions, he was able to provide a better experience for everyone. And as the man left the store, pleased with his purchase, Kevin felt a sense of pride. Maybe there was something to this new approach after all. I know one morning as Sarah was preparing for another day at the store, she received a call from Darius. My sister Maya is going to stop by the store later today, he said. I'd appreciate it if you could show her around and give her an update on the progress we've made. Sarah agreed, feeling a bit nervous at the prospect of meeting someone so close to Darius. Maya arrived at the store later that afternoon, dressed in a simple but stylish outfit. She had the same quiet confidence as her brother, and as Sarah greeted her, she felt an immediate connection. I've heard a lot about you, Maya said with a warm smile. Darius has been singing your praises. Sarah blushed slightly but she quickly launched into a tour of the store, 
explaining all the changes they had implemented over the past few weeks. As they walked through the aisles, Maya listened intently, asking thoughtful questions and offering her own insights. By the time the tour was over, Sarah felt even more confident in the direction they were heading. You're doing great work here, Maya said, her voice filled with encouragement. I can see the difference. Darius made the right choice putting you in charge. With the retraining sessions nearing their conclusion, Sarah knew that the final phase would be the most challenging. This phase focused on ensuring that the new culture of inclusivity and respect became a permanent part of the store's DNA. It wasn't enough to go through the motions. The staff needed to fully internalize the values that Darius had built his brand on. To help solidify these changes, Sarah brought in outside experts on customer service and inclusivity to lead workshops and discussions. The sessions were designed to challenge the staff's assumptions and push them to think critically about how they interacted with customers. It wasn't easy. Some of the more senior staff members were still resistant to change, but the overall mood in the store was one of growth and progress. At the end of the final session, Sarah stood in front of the group and addressed them with pride. You've all come a long way, she said, her voice filled with emotion. I know this hasn't been easy, but the work you've done here has made a real difference. Our customers are noticing, and more importantly, you're building a culture that reflects the values of this brand. The staff applauded, and Sarah felt a deep sense of accomplishment. As the weeks passed, the store continued to thrive under Sarah's leadership. Sales were up, but more importantly, customer feedback was overwhelmingly positive. People from all walks of life were now walking through the doors, knowing they would be treated with respect and care, regardless of how they looked or how much money they had. Darius made a point to visit the store regularly, watching with pride as the transformation continued to unfold. The toxic culture that had once permeated the store under Mason's leadership was gone, replaced by an atmosphere of warmth and inclusivity. Sarah had done an incredible job, and Darius couldn't have been prouder of her. One afternoon, as Darius stood in the store, watching the staff interact with customers, he felt a deep sense of satisfaction. This was exactly what he had envisioned when he built his brand, a place where luxury wasn't about exclusion, but about giving everyone the opportunity to experience something special. The store was thriving, and the future looked brighter than ever. To celebrate the success of the store's transformation, Darius decided to host a special event for the staff and some of the store's most loyal customers. The event would be held in the newly redesigned store, showcasing the changes that had been made and celebrating the hard work that had gone into making those changes a reality. On the night of the event, the store was filled with excitement. The staff mingled with customers, sharing stories about the transformation and expressing their gratitude for the opportunity to be part of something bigger than themselves. Darius stood at the front of the room, microphone in hand, ready to address the group. Thank you all for being here tonight, Darius began, his voice filled with pride. This store has always been a symbol of luxury, but over the past few months, it has become something more. It has become a place where people from all backgrounds can walk through these doors and feel valued. That transformation is because of all of you. The room erupted in applause, and Darius felt a deep sense of accomplishment. As the applause died down, Darius turned his attention to Sarah, who stood beside him, her face flushed with pride and emotion. None of this would have been possible without the leadership of Sarah Moore, Darius continued, his voice filled with sincerity. She has shown an unwavering commitment to the values that this company was built on, respect, inclusivity, and excellence. She has led this store through one of its most challenging times, and I am proud to say that she is the future of this company. Sarah stepped forward, accepting the microphone from Darius. Her hands trembled slightly, but her voice was strong and filled with emotion. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell, she said, her eyes scanning the room. I am honored to be part of this company, and I am grateful for the opportunity to lead such an incredible team. This journey hasn't been easy, but together we've created something special, something that reflects the values we all believe in. As Sarah spoke, Darius found himself reflecting on the journey they had taken together. The store had come a long way since that fateful day when he walked in undercover, and now it was a true reflection of the values his father had instilled in him. The work wasn't done, but they were well on their way. Later that evening, after the event had ended and the store had emptied out, 
Darius stood by the window of his office, looking out over the city. The celebration had been a success, but now, in the quiet of his office, Darius allowed himself a moment of reflection. The journey he had taken to get to this point had been filled with challenges, but it had also been deeply rewarding. His thoughts drifted back to his father, who had taught him everything he knew about dignity, perseverance, and respect. His father had faced countless indignities throughout his life, often being judged based on his appearance rather than his character. Darius had inherited his father's strength, but more importantly, he had inherited his sense of responsibility to make the world a better place for those who came after him. As Darius stood there, staring out at the city, he felt a deep sense of peace. The fight wasn't over. There was still work to be done. But for the first time in a long time, he felt that he was on the right path. The store was thriving, the staff was flourishing, and the values his father had instilled in him were alive and well. Just as Darius was about to leave his office, his phone buzzed in his pocket. It was a message from his sister, Maya. She had always been his biggest supporter, cheering him on from the sidelines as he built his empire. The message was simple, but it brought a smile to Darius's face. Dad would be so proud of you, Maya had written. I hope you know that. Darius stared at the message for a long moment, feeling a lump form in his throat. He knew Maya was right. His father would be proud, not just of the success Darius had built, but of the man he had become. A man who had chosen to stand up for what was right, even when it wasn't easy. A man who had honored his father's legacy by creating a company that reflected the values of inclusivity, respect, and excellence. As Darius slipped his phone back into his pocket, he felt a sense of closure wash over him. The journey hadn't been easy, but it had been worth it. He had faced challenges, made mistakes, and uncovered painful truths. But through it all, he had remained true to his father's teachings. And that, more than anything, was something to be proud of. The next morning, Darius made one final visit to the store, walking through the doors unannounced. The atmosphere inside was completely different from the one he had encountered on his first visit. There was an energy in the air, something warm and welcoming. Customers were being greeted with genuine smiles, and the staff moved through their daily routines with a sense of purpose and pride. As Darius walked through the aisles, he saw Sarah speaking with a customer, her tone warm and attentive. The transformation was real, and it was all happening under her leadership. She spotted Darius across the floor and quickly wrapped up her conversation, making her way over. Good morning, Mr. Mitchell, Sarah said with a smile, though there was still a hint of nervousness in her voice. What brings you by today? Darius looked around, taking in the atmosphere. I just wanted to see how things were going, he said. It looks different. Sarah's eyes brightened. It feels different, too, she said. The staff is really embracing the changes. I think they're starting to understand what we're trying to build here. Darius nodded approvingly. You've done an incredible job, Sarah. I knew you were the right person for this. As Darius stood by the entrance of the store, watching customers come and go, he felt a deep sense of peace. The store was no longer just a business. It was a reflection of the values his father had instilled in him, a testament to the power of inclusivity and respect. The work wasn't done, but the future looked brighter than ever. He turned to Sarah, who stood beside him, looking out at the bustling store with a mixture of pride and relief. You've built something special here, Darius said quietly. My father would have been proud. Sarah looked up at him, her eyes softening with understanding. I think he'd be proud of you too, Mr. Mitchell, she said. You've turned this company into something truly remarkable. Darius smiled, his heart swelling with emotion. As he stepped out into the cool morning air, he knew that his father's legacy was secure. The journey had been long and difficult, but it had been worth it. And as he walked down the busy streets of New York, Darius felt a sense of calm settle over him. The future was bright, not just for his company, but for everyone who walked through its doors.